We're gonna give you the best rotational exercises that you can use for baseball, and we're gonna start right now. So when we're thinking about rotational movement, okay, even just doing something here with this dumbbell, right? I'm here, I step, and I wanna think about controlling the knob and coming through, okay? Count, it's like a counter movement here, boom. So when we're thinking about rotational movements with baseball, we have to think through what are we doing when we're batting, and we have to understand the science around how we hit, okay? And we've gone into this with specific videos, breaking down how different batters actually swing their bat, how studies have shown us the sequencing from our hands into our elbows, into our trunk and into our hips, okay? So we have an understanding, one, about batting and the rotational strength that we need. But now two, we have to start to comprehend things from a rotational perspective with how we're throwing the ball. So if we're looking at how we're throwing, okay, all these things are happening at very, very high speeds. So there's two things generally that will tell us what we need to do to train them. We don't need to train super, super heavy all the time. Getting massive and not training at high speeds isn't going to be the best thing for baseball specific strength. We wanna focus on higher speed movements and a nice transfer of training of relative strength so that we can take something here that's happening very fast and then feel what that's going to be. We wanna feel that control of the knob. So using an exercise like a dumbbell swing where it's gonna give us this here, okay? And then we can have that isometric hold. That's gonna mimic that contact point and that's gonna improve our exit velocity. So we've gotta look through that lens as we go through the next four exercises that you can use to improve your rotational strength. Okay, so higher speeds, right? That's what we're focusing on. One, higher speeds. Two, specificity, because everything's happening very, very quickly. Baseball's a slower game when you're observing, but things happen at the drop of a hat. So the first exercise now, I wanna focus on rotational jump lunges. So we're gonna go here, boom, 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 boom. That's gonna help us train the our obliques. That's gonna help us train that dynamic trunk control. That's gonna help us be explosive through our hips. And it's gonna help us recruit that posterior chain while being stable. That's gonna help us throw a little bit harder. That's gonna help us hit a little bit more dialed in, a little bit more controlled. Now, you can use a plate or you can use a dumbbell. What I wanna see is a rotation down to the lead leg. Here, come up, boom, 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 boom. Do five sets of four on each side. Do this once or twice a week. Improve that dynamic trunk control. Improve your rate of coordination and in turn, that's gonna to lead to better speed with rotation. Okay, the second key exercise is something that you can use if you're an outfielder, think about even a shortstop, you're making a crazy play and you're on one leg and you've gotta go cross body. Also think about a batter. We've got more load on one side and we wanna transfer that energy into the bat, which in turn ideally goes into the ball and we hit a dinger. So we're looking at this phenomenal exercise and it's going to be a side jump into a medicine ball throw. When we throw that side jump in, we have to focus on deceleration through the quad, through the glute med, get into that rotation, so we want a big deep stretch, and then a rapid acceleration out of that side jump. So this movement is something that you can do, I would say twice a week, and it's something that will transfer, one, if you're an outfielder and you need to hit a big time crow hop. You gotta get somebody out at home. Perfect case scenario, you train this very frequently. Second big factor, I mentioned, if you're a shortstop or you're a third baseman and you're off balance, you're running across body, you make a play, and you've got to throw off of one leg. If you don't have that trunk control, okay, if you can't post up and then get off of that, even if we're on one leg, if we don't have that dynamic trunk control, we're gonna collapse, which in turn doesn't provide that stability for our shoulder to accelerate the ball to the first baseman. So this movement will help us be a better fielder. And then finally, because we're getting a little bit of a jump into this rapid acceleration, this rotation is also gonna help you in the batter's box. So when we're looking through that lens, one of high speed, two of specificity, Three, we have a great transfer of training. So do this twice a week, five sets of three to four reps on each side. And you can even make it a little bit more challenging where you wanna use a lighter ball, let's say an eight pound ball, but you can even throw it for distance 
to a partner. I even believe this is a great movement to use when you're warming up out on the diamond. So this next movement I use with a lot of my shot putters, a lot of my discus throwers. And if we're studying something like golf, right? We understand that high speeds of rotation transfer very, very well to golf stroke. Same thing for baseball. I've talked about Tony Gwynn in the past as far as batting is concerned and controlling that knob. We've talked about Vlad Guerrero Jr. and what he does from that science-based perspective, his counter movement, how he picks up the slot, and that leads to his counter movement, which in turn leads to his tremendous swing. So if we don't have the capability of someone like Tony Gwynn or somebody like Vlad Guerrero Jr., which 99.9% .9 of athletes don't have that ability, we've got to make up for it with some high tension, with some more speed. Think about John Carlos Stanton. He has nowhere near the eye ability of Tony Gwynn or Vlad Guerrero Jr. or Mike Trout, but in his peak, he had a very, very fast swing and that helped him make up for things. He still struggled with injuries. Now, what we can do then is we can take an exercise that we've taken from our shot putters, from our world-class discus throwers, and we can move this, okay, and think about a specific position that we would be in. Remember, I mentioned throwing off of one leg. So we can go here, boom, come forward here, boom, and try and feel this tension in our abs, okay? We wanna feel that and then rotate back. So what this does is it doesn't put a lot of stress on our shoulder or our elbows. We know that throwing the ball puts a lot of stress on our elbows. It puts a lot of stress on our shoulders. But if we can still train the hip, train that proper sequencing through the trunk and train that into the hand, we're still gonna have that positive transfer out on the field. So we can go here, boom, boom, boom. And then to train that even further, you can go with a slow eccentric. Okay, here, boom, one, two, three, four. And as you're coming back, you're gonna to start to feel that a little bit more in that trunk. So use this band. One, you can do this to warm up before practice, but two, I would recommend doing that two to three days a week. Make sure you're moving fast. Make sure you're controlling that eccentric. Try to feel the actual actions that you would use out on the field while you're doing these exercises so they transfer a little bit more. Five sets of five to each side to make sure that you're structurally balanced. Now, one of the things with minor league baseball players, with even the collegiate system, you guys struggle to have a periodized program, okay? You struggle to take unique movements and put them into a system of training that's gonna help you become a better baseball player. That's exactly why we created peak strength. Inside of peak strength, you can go in and you can select that you wanna train specifically as a baseball player and we'll build out a program specific to your needs as an athlete out on the diamond to optimize your shoulder health, your ability to throw hard, and your ability to increase that exit velocity. Head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store to download Peak Strength today for five free workouts. Now, this next movement you may not have ever seen before. So this is a really, really unique push-pull movement. This is an exercise we're gonna be using our power elastic bands, okay? So our power elastics, we got these loops in them, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna set these up on two different immovable objects. This is very easy to execute. This is extremely good for baseball. I've even used this if we're talking about fighting or even throwing to a point. Now, we wanna get set, okay? We can put this here in this position. We wanna establish our stance, wherever that might be, if we're trying to focus on throwing, if we're trying to just focus on straight up rotation, that's perfectly fine as well. And what we wanna do is get a little bit of a counter movement here, push, pull, okay? And you'll feel that here through that left glute as you're pulling, and then at the same time, the trunk stability here as we're driving forward. Because what we want to do then is we're trying to get pulled back by the band, but we're going to create that tension through our trunk. We talked about dynamic trunk control. And if we're batting and we're going all over the place, we're not going to have a good quiet eye. Quiet eye plays a huge role one, in tracking a baseball, but two, with tracking a baseball if we're out in the outfield, and we've got to run here to track down that ball. So if we can focus on that dynamic trunk control and feel that rotational strength from different aspects, and then make sure that we're training the push-pull from both specific sides, now we can in turn improve our overall rotational speed. We can focus on that specificity that we'll have out on the field, and then three, 
it's going to lead to better performance. You can do this twice a week, okay? Five sets of five to each side. And then I would recommend on that last rep, have a controlled eccentric so you can feel and work through all those specific rotational positions that's gonna transfer over to the diamond. So if you guys need help with your programming, head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, or the Apple iOS Store so you can get easy access to freak training. Because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.